IR and land intervention continues for the forest fire that broke out in Kozan district of Adana. The fire spread to the olive grove due to the strong winds in the region and the olive garden belonging to a citizen was burned. While Kozan district gendarmerie teams evacuated 10 houses in the neighborhood, a citizen supported the intervention by plowing his field to prevent the fire from spreading to the houses. The teams responded to the fire with two planes, three helicopters, 25 water trucks, 13 water tanks, 12 first response vehicles, five construction machines and 280 personnel, while efforts to bring the fire under control continue. Kozan District Governor Bahatan Alp Arslankoilu is following up on fire extinguishing efforts at the scene by establishing a crisis desk with forest fire extinguishing teams at the Fire Coordination Center. The fire is being fought by numerous teams from air and land. The forest fire that broke out in the Yumukler district of Antalya was fought with eight planes, six helicopters, 70 water trucks, 11 water supply vehicles, five construction machines and a large number of fire extinguishing workers. Two helicopters with night vision, 70 water tenders, 11 water supply vehicles, five construction machines and many fire extinguishing workers from the General Directorate of Forestry are trying to bring the flames under control. It was learned that the fire, which was partially brought under control yesterday, did not progress too much thanks to the team's intervention throughout the night. It was reported that two more firefighting helicopters began to support the work at daybreak. Russia complained following a missile strike on the Saki airfield in occupied Crimea, admitting it lacks time to build proper shelters. Russia's lament highlights the significant impact of the strike on the Russian airbase, which houses the 43rd Separate Naval Assault Regiment with Su-24M and Su-30SM aircraft, Defense Express reports. The Russian mill blogger Fighter Bomber noted that the airfield services now require at least two armored vehicles to evacuate the wounded under dangerous conditions where ammunition might be exploding. This detail adds insight into the severity of the strike. Additionally, Fighter Bomber mentioned that the delay between reconnaissance and strike by the Ukrainian Defense Forces has decreased to six hours, necessitating the movement of aircraft every five hours or relocating them out of missile range. Despite this, systematic successful attacks by Ukraine with long-range drones pose a continued threat to Russian aircraft. Amidst these operational challenges, Russia faces a significant issue. It lacks reinforced concrete arched shelter structures for aircraft like the Su-27, Su-30, Su-34 and Su-35, a problem persisting since the 1980s. Moreover, reports indicate that tourists are taken to a beach camping site through the airbase territory near Saki, comprising secrecy. This situation underscores the juxtaposition of military facilities with tourist sites, a standard occurrence that further complicates security measures. Now there is an additional reconnaissance of this strike, but we can preliminarily say that ammunition depot was targeted and as far as I know, it is detonating. Several enemy aircraft that are located at this airfield could also be damaged, Serhi Bratchuk, the speaker of the South Ukrainian Volunteer Army said. Bratchuk recalled that before that, the Saki airbase had been hit in January and the occupiers may have hoped that there would be no strikes on it in the foreseeable future. As Bratchuk said, they did not even have time to launch their aircraft for defense. There have been at least 16 of them at the airfield recently. We are talking about the Su-34 and Su-35, but it's not just about aircraft. Here it is necessary to understand, in my opinion, a more serious thing. Aircraft were damaged, and it is good when aircraft are being shot down or destroyed. But, in my opinion, the main thing is to destroy airbase infrastructure, because this is what ensures the flights of these aircraft. There will be no infrastructure, there will be no takeoffs, and moreover, there will be no landings. 
and at a minimum, the enemy will move their aircraft to a longer distance, for example, to the territory of the Russian Federation, which increases both the approach time and the ability of Ukrainian air defense systems to respond in the event of an enemy air attack. And most importantly, our people will have more time to hide in a safe place, commented Serhii Bratchuk.